So I'm Carrie. I'm Miss Tennessee Volunteer. Um, so what I thought we'd do today, I want to tell you a little bit about me and how I got started in this, what my job is, and then just kind of if y'all have any questions or just want to talk about something and kind of what my job is or some things you want to do and maybe how you can get there. I thought that's how we would do it. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I got started in pageants my junior year of high school. I had always competed at like the fair or the local school pageants, things like that my whole life. But my junior year of high school, I won the Benton County Fair and I went to the state fair. And I was just trying not to throw up or trip on stage. But I went and I worked hard and I ended up winning that one. So that's kind of how I got on this journey towards Miss Tennessee. I'd always wanted to do that. I met my first Miss Tennessee when I was in the fifth grade, I think. And I thought she was so cool and had the coolest job, but I never thought that was something that I could do until I got started doing these bigger pageants when I was a junior in high school. And the growth that I saw and the things, the opportunities that I saw I could have through that is what really got me on this track. So I was what I've called an, an introverted extrovert. So I'm pretty outgoing. I'm pretty loud most of the time. I'm the youngest of three girls, but certain things made me want to like panic, just freaked me out. So I didn't want to do interviews. I was in a lot of clubs in high school. I was president of a lot of clubs, but as far as those things where I had to just speak in front of a lot of people or I had to do those interviews, I hated it. I didn't want to do it. It terrified me. Interviews terrified me. But through pageants, I grew confident in the skills that I had and the things that I continued to grow on and learn. And I got over that. And I saw that I could make a difference in my community even more so because I'm from a very small town. I technically live in Holiday in West Tennessee. And there's only a K through eighth grade. My uncle was my principal, my basketball coach, and he's my preacher, which is across the road from my <laughs> elementary and junior high. So I'm from a very small town, and you had to go to the town over for high school. So seeing ways that I could get even more involved and do things within my community that we might not have been able to offer or outside of my community really interested me. It's, it made me want to work really hard and continue to push myself until I got to at least go to the Miss Tennessee stage. So I worked really hard, and I got started in college. I made sure I had my first year off. So I could get started, make my good grades, get the hang of it, because college is it's different than high school. But this past October, I competed in my first prelim. You have to complete in a preliminary pageant to go to Miss Tennessee. And I competed in my first pageant, and I won that. And then I started preparing for Miss Tennessee in June. And there's a lot of different things that go into it. And the biggest thing, the thing I think that scared me the most was the interview. I had grown in my confidence and what I could do and my ability to talk to someone, but thinking about the worldly questions we might be asked was a little scary, but I prepared. I began preparing in October, the day after I won, and I prepared for interview. We have on-stage questions, we have lifestyle and fitness, and we have talent. So I started preparing for those areas of competition, but also what my job would be. So I competed, went through that whole week, had the best time, and I won which is crazy because it was my first time competing. And with that, I get to do a lot of really neat things this year. And some of those things are I'm the Goodwill Ambassador for the Children's Miracle Network hospitals within our state. We have five. And I get to travel to each of those. And I'll be at one next week. And I really just get to go and be something different for these kids. These kids are receiving treatments or dealing with their different illnesses and ailments. And I'm able to go and kind of take their mind off of it, kind of be you know, the distraction for the day, something to make them smile. And it's really one of the most rewarding things that you could ever imagine. I get to be the spokesperson for the Make-A-Wish Foundation this year. I get to travel the state and help raise awareness for that, raise money, grant wishes to these kids. And that's something that, for me, has been near and dear to my heart. I got involved in it my freshman year of college through my sorority. And I liked it because of the good that it did for the kids. But the things that people don't realize is that these children are going through a lot, but their families do as well. So when I was younger, I had epilepsy. And it's, it's nothing compared to what some of these kids who get wishes granted from the Make-A-Wish Foundation. It's nothing compared to what they have. 
but I had epilepsy when I was younger. And it didn't just affect me, it affected my family as well. My sister had watched a scary movie. I'm, you know, the youngest, so she'd watch a scary movie, and instead of going and getting in bed with my parents, she crawled in my room. She was there for my first big seizure, and that's had an effect on her for the rest of her life. Now she's a mom, and she worries about those things with her kids. So that's the thing with Make-A-Wish. These illnesses don't just affect the child, they also affect the families. The parents go through it, the, the siblings, aunts, uncles, grandparents. And Make-A-Wish not only helps these children, but it helps the family. They're not just, when they send a child to Disney World, they send the whole family. They provide the whole family with you know, gifts and shirts and luggage and passes. Everyone gets to have that experience and everyone gets to see that member of their family get to be a kid, get to enjoy it, get to have something that without it they may not have been able to have the chance to do. So that's another thing that I get to do. But one thing that I do more than anything is I am the governor's spokesperson for character education. So all the character counts things that you learn throughout school, I get to go and I get to pick one. And I get to pick whatever I want it to be. And I get to talk to schools, talk to different groups about that character trait. I chose caring, why I think it's important, and how we can implement that every day. So the way that I've done that is when I was in the sixth grade, I was in FCA. And my FCA group, we read a book, and I brought it just to show it to you. Um, we read this book, Have You Filled a Bucket Today? Have any of you read it before? One or two? Okay, so I'm going to tell you what it's about, just so kind of you know what I get to do every day and what I get to talk about. So Have You Filled a Bucket is about the idea that we all carry around an invisible bucket. Okay, in that bucket is all of our good thoughts and feelings about ourselves. And you can either choose to be a bucket filler or a bucket dipper. And a bucket filler is someone who is kind and caring. And a bucket dipper is kind of like a bully. And I talk about that because as you fill a bucket, as you show kindness, you fill their bucket and yours. And it's something that I don't think people realize you deal with it throughout your whole life. Throughout your whole life, you're going to run into people who are either going to fill your bucket or dip into it. And it's about how you react to it and what you choose to do with it. For me, I talk about my personal experiences with being bullied. I had cousins in my classes when I was in elementary and junior high, so I don't count that as much because it was family picking. But I was bullied in high school, and I've since been bullied in college. So how I responded to those things and how I chose to handle them and to go at them as a bucket filler to show kindness and caring natures rather than retaliating to the things that were done to me, it helped me to grow, and eventually those people stopped. So it's all about how you handle the situation, and that's what I want to pass on to these kids, that the things that they say, the things that they do, the choices that they make, they matter. And for me, I would have never in a million years gotten this job and this opportunity if I had been a bucket dipper, because I, my college is paid for because of this. I competed in Miss Tennessee Volunteer, it's a scholarship pageant, and I got $25,000 in scholarships for winning. I have to finish my year, I'm working hard, but that's going to have me finishing college debt free. And that's an opportunity that I never would have gotten if I hadn't gone through my life thinking about how I treated others and gone about it as a bucket filler instead. So that's kind of what I get to do throughout the whole year. I get to do some other really cool stuff too. I get to do like the parades and all that fun stuff. But that's the big part of my job because I'm in a position, just like each and every one of you are with your different clubs and your tutoring, your different groups that you're in, you're in a position to make a difference for someone. And it's a big responsibility. So my organization, the Miss Tennessee Volunteer Pageant, we have an acronym that we use, it's SERVE. And each letter stands for something different. So it's scholarship, education, responsibility, volunteerism, and empowerment. And for me, what I like to focus in on is that empowerment because this organization, pageants for me, have empowered me to go and do a lot of things throughout my life that I would not have done, especially being from a small town. I have been empowered to get out of my shell, to do things that I wouldn't have done, to compete in these pageants where I'm getting a scholarship money and I'm getting a higher education. I've been empowered to take on the responsibility because it's a lot of responsibility that I have this year. Being Miss Tennessee Volunteer, I have to realize that I'm a role model for a lot of these kids that I visit, and sometimes they need that. 
they need that person to look at them and tell them, you know, everything's okay, you're doing a good job, you know, you're, you're loved, and they do. There's so many kids that need that. And it's gone and empowered me to get others involved in volunteering in our community. Because being from a small community, you have to. If someone doesn't take that initiative to get out and get started and to get to doing these things, who's going to do it? So it's done a lot for me. It's helped me a lot throughout my life, and I can see how it's going to help me later on. But that's all I have about me. But I want you all to kind of just ask me anything you want. We can talk about anything you want to go. Questions about what you all are doing, what I do, what my job is, anything you got. Anybody? I want to know more about this epilepsy bill that you're trying to get past. So when I was five, I had that my first big seizure. And when I was younger, I didn't really see what the the big things were. The only thing that bothered me about it was when I would go to a sleepover. Mine were brought on by sleep deprivation. So I couldn't stay up as late as everybody else and it made me so mad. But as I got older, I started asking my friends at school, do you know what to do if I had a seizure? And it had been a while since I'd had one, but I just, you know, was wondering one day, not a single person knew what to do. And then I was playing softball with a girl from Henry County, you know, just a town over. And she had had a seizure at school. Her teacher was not in the classroom. Nobody knew what to do. So a student ran out of the classroom, went to go find somebody. But luckily, a friend of hers passed by, saw through the window what was happening, and was able to come in and help. But nobody knew what to do. So what it is, Carrie's Bill, is the, the hope that we can get first aid for seizure protocol posted in every classroom within the state. It would be something there, something visible, so that whether it be a sub, the teacher, a student, a visitor, someone would know what to do if someone had a seizure. Because there's so many things that can happen if something's not done. Anybody else? How long do you get to keep your job? Till next June. I'm going to be out of work <laughs> come the third week of June next year. Do you think you'll do any more pageants and try to get any further in the pattern tree world? I think for me, this was my goal. This is what I wanted to get to, and I'm seeing job opportunities and windows that are opening and doors for me. So I'll probably be done after this year. Don't hold me to it in case something changes. <laughs> but I'm really excited to get to start on my degree, and I've been very blessed. I go to UT Martin, and my university has been very supportive of the things that I get to do this year, and they're encouraging different job opportunities and different routes through them that I can start as soon as this year's finished. So I'm probably done after this, but we'll see. What do you want to go into after college? So I started as nursing. When I started college, I started as nursing. And I realized for me, what I liked about it was that I could help people. And I thought that was the way that I had to go, having had many health issues throughout my life. But since I started pageants, I've seen other ways that I can get involved in my community, other ways I can help people. So I've changed my major since I won. So I'm basically starting all over. I'm going to be a professional student. But I've changed my major to fashion merchandising and marketing. Two things I enjoy, but it's a way for me to stay somewhat involved within the pageant area and see, seize those opportunities to volunteer and to help others and to, to be involved in this community. Because pageantry is kind of like a community. Everyone helps each other, and that's how I've seen these opportunities to go to different hospitals within our state, to go to different schools, to talk to different kids about different things. Anybody else? Yeah, i got to have more questions than that. <laughs> uh, what kind of questions do they ask you in pageants? Like, what, one, what was a question you got for Miss Tennessee? So, for my interview, sometimes it's political, sometimes it's not. I ended up with a lot more about what was on my paperwork. So your paperwork consists of a lot of different things. It's things that you've done academically through your schools, your interesting facts, um, what your goal is, is, should you be crowned Miss Tennessee Volunteer. And so my interview was more about myself and what I do. My on-stage question, though, was how I have gone out and gotten involved within my community. The girl right behind me got a gun control question. <laughs> so I was very lucky I skipped that one. But I did have to prepare. So what is it called? I can't even think of it. Um, I had an app. I listened to podcasts. And The Skim. Have you all heard of The Skim? I love The Skim. If you don't really like the news, it's a really little short 
podcast about what's going on, so you're informed and you're aware. That's how I was became aware of what was going on in the world. I listened to it every single day, and I had some catching up to do because I did not like the news. The news, I thought it just made me sad. It seemed like there was so much going on in the world, but it was so important that you're informed and that you know because you're who's going to go out and who's going to better our world. You're going to go and you're going to get jobs and you're going to be an asset to your community. So it's important that you're informed. And it gives you all that background info. So instead of just turning on the news and being like, what is that? What are they talking about? They stop and they say, okay, so here's what that means. So that's how I got prepared for Miss Tennessee and my questions and my on-stage question. I listened. I prepared. I had to do prep interviews, Samantha Milton, which those are a little scary to too because they want to ask you the Samantha hardest Samantha questions Milton, you can possibly have to That way, if you get one, you're not just shocked. <laughs> and it is. We were all panicking backstage because we don't want to be shocked on stage. Everyone was looking at each other kind of like, okay, what did you learn in the news this morning? What do you have going on? Somebody asked me a question, but it can be a little bit of anything. Anybody else? Y'all are so quiet. Come on. <laughs> it's a small group. You can ask anything. <clears throat> Y'all have any? Did you make any friends? I made some of the best friends that I have through pageants. That is one thing that these they're girls that I look forward to seeing from prelim to prelim because I travel so much. And that week, it's a full week. You go on a Sunday and you leave on the Saturday. We go on Father's Day most of the time. I said my winning was Dad's late Father's Day present. But you go and you're there that entire week. You don't have your parents. You know, you have awesome women who volunteer and who are there to help you if you need anything. But you're pretty much by yourself. So you find these girls who are there and who want to help who want to see other women bettering themselves, bettering their community, and working hard. And that's what I've ran into, and I've made some of the best friends that I could have ever asked for through pageant.